own soul say. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Right. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this bike. Right? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. All right, Continue that now go ahead and read that again. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to start from verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. I just want to speed through it because I want to hear that. I want the brother to hear that before he took off. Go ahead. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So Jacob, give me that sign again. So it says the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. This is Jacob. Now, real quick, let's let's flash back. Let's go. Let's go to the birth of Jacob and Esau, real quick, because I don't know if everybody knows this history. Give me Genesis 25. Give me Genesis 25, start at verse 21. How you doing? I can't tell if you're 14 or 35. Huh? How? 22. Okay, just short. Okay, all praise. Let me ask you a question. Do you know? Did, have you ever heard that you're an Israelite? Okay, I'll praise. Hang around for a few minutes. Read that. Start verse 21. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. Uh -huh. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. So Isaac is Jacob's father. It says he entreated the Lord for his wife. Meaning Isaac went to the Lord and he prayed to the Lord about his wife. Go ahead. Because she was barren. Because she couldn't have kids. They were trying to have kids and she couldn't get pregnant. So he went to the Lord and prayed about it. Go ahead. And the Lord was entreated of him. It says so the Lord heard him. Okay, so he was entreated. He heard him. He heard his prayer. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And his wife got pregnant. Okay, go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. This way it get interesting. It says those children, so she's going to have twins. It says they struggle together. They're fighting in her womb. Already from the womb, they fight. Okay, go ahead. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? She's saying, Lord, if this is from you, why is this happening? Why am I having this troubled pregnancy? Why are these children fighting in my womb if this is of God? Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. This is what she prayed. This is what she asked the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. That's heavy right there. See, we got to understand, this is happening in the book of Genesis. The book Genesis, is, a, is the Hebrew word is Bereshit. It means, it means the beginning, okay? So this is the beginning of nations. These are when different nations are just being formed on the earth, okay? So he said two nations are in your womb, okay? Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowel. What do you mean two manner of people? What's somebody's manner? It's the way they act. It's the way they carry themselves. It's the spirit that they got on them. It says these two kids, they will have totally two different mannerisms. One gonna like they food, one gonna like they, they, they food unseasoned and, and, and unseasoned, and one gonna like they food seasoned. Okay? They just gonna be two totally different type of people. Okay? One gonna like one gonna like hot weather, warm weather, one gonna like cold weather. These are two different type of people. So it says two
two manner of people shall be separated, not together, shall be separated from thy bowels. They're already fighting. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Now we ain't say that. The Bible just said one of these nations are going to be stronger than the other one. Who's, who run the fastest? Who jumped the highest? Who's the best boxers? Who's the stronger nation? Jacob. Okay, we know that. We see it every day in our society. Okay? It says one people shall be stronger than the other people. Go ahead. That's, do you think they could have do you think they could have survived 400 years of chattel slavery? Do you think they could have survived 400 years of slavery in hot ass Egypt? Wouldn't have happened. They would have died off. They can't even go out in the sun without sunblock. They didn't have no sun, no sunblock back then. Okay? Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the younger. It says, and the older child is going to be the servant to the younger child, which is actually what we're reading in the book of Isaiah 14. So let's see which one come out first, because the first one that comes out is going to eventually, in time, be the servant to the second one that come out. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, and when she was at the full term of her pregnancy, Behold, there were twins in her womb. We established that. Go ahead. And the first came out red. So it's going to give you some characteristics. Say the first child that came out, he was red. Red. Go ahead. All over like a hairy garment. And he was hairy. Have you ever seen those, um, the Geico cave, caveman commercials? Yeah, well, you ever seen, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a black caveman? No. Because the caveman wasn't black. The caveman was white. And they know it. That's why they put it in there. Okay, so he said it came out red and hairy. That's Esau. Go ahead. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. Uh -huh. And they call his name Esau. So that's Esau. Esau's the one that came out red and hairy. Go ahead. And he was the one that came out first. He's the elder. So it said the elder shall serve the younger. So he's got his nation of people is going to serve the people that come out next. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. So he says, after that, uh, came out his brother Jacob, and his hand grabbed on the Esau's heel. That symbolized something. Give me that. Give me that uh, in um, second Ezra. Give me that real quick. That's a, that's, that symbolizes something. When the first one came out, and then uh, Jacob grabbed his heel, it's gonna show, we're going to show you what that means, what it symbolizes. Remember it said the eldest shall serve the younger, right? Watch this. Verse 8, 69. Six, six, six through nine. Six through nine, yeah. Second Ezra, chapter six. Start six. Um, six, start six. Second Ezra, chapter six and verse six. Uh -huh. Then did I consider these things, uh -huh. and they were all made through me alone, uh -huh. and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, uh -huh. and by none other. And this is the most high God talking. He said, all these things he's in control of. Go ahead. Then answered I and said, what shall be the part in asunder of the time? So he said, he's asking, the question. Esdras is asking the angel. He's saying, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? What he's asking him is, when is going to be the end of this world? I mean, the end of the people that's in rulership in this world? And when is the next one going to start? Because everything goes in cycles. If you know it, at one time, Egypt was like, Egypt was a superpower on earth. Right. And then it was, uh, you had the Assyrians was a superpower on earth. Then you had the Persians was a superpower on earth. You had the, the Greeks, you had the Romans, you had America. Like, it, there's always a power shift to a new people of, of rulership on the earth. So read. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed. So when's going to be the end of this, this, the first world and the beginning of the next one that followed? Go ahead. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him. When Jacob and Esau were born of him, which we were just reading in Genesis 25. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. And now I was about to tell you what that means, Jacob holding the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau, the white man, is the end of this world. He's going to destroy this place. He already destroying the oceans. He dropping bombs all over the place. Now they got the Afghan refugees coming over here. They stand here in America. Right. In the Bible, it calls them caterpillars. What does a caterpillar do in a garden? It destroys everything. And it, it, it does change. But And their, their nature, from what they look like now, it's going to change. Okay, meaning that 
They seem to be coming over here and everything like innocent and docile. Oh, we're refugees, we need somewhere to stay. But at a certain point, they're gonna raise up against this place, okay? The Bible also talks about sleeper cells. That's them. The, meaning that the threat is going already, the threat is already here in the country. Okay, but back to Esau. Esau destroys everything. In the Bible, he is called, he, he is the deceiver. He deceived all of the nations on earth. He got us thinking that we African American. Right. right. Instead of the children of Israel. When you call yourself African American, Africa is named after a, a Roman, a, a white guy named Leo Silvio Africanus. Okay, America's named after a white guy, an Italian map maker named Amerigo Vespucci. So I'm saying I'm African American, I descend from two, two white people. Also, when I was born, I was born in 1973, there was nothing called, there was nothing called African American. Right. That term didn't come around until Jesse Jackson made it up in 1986. So how can I be older than my nationality? How can we be called black? We've been called colored, we've been called Negroes, we've been called Afro-Americans, we've been called African-Americans, we've been called all these different things. We the only people who nationality keep changing. Right. But now God is putting back into the earth that we are the people of this book. That's this book right. It's all about us. That's it was written by us and written right. for us and written to us. That's right. Okay? We finish reading. So it's telling you what that analogy of Jacob holding Esau's heel is. Read it again. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of this world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Meaning the Israelites are the next rulership on the earth. That's right. God's people are going to rule the earth next. Give me that in Matthew 6. Matthew 6, I think it's verse 9. Give me that. We pray that all the time and we don't even realize what we're praying. How many people have prayed the Lord's Prayer? You pray that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. No, we not, no. What is it saying? No. Watch this. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father, Our Father, the Most High God, who resides in heaven. God resides in the third heaven. You got the third heaven, then you got the second heaven, which is the sky, then you got the heaven that's on earth. Heaven is on earth. Rulership. rulership. That's happening on earth. It's rulership. It's when your people are collecting taxes. It's when your people control the banking system. When your people control all of the water supply. When your people control the food industry. When your people control the textiles and the clothing industry. That's rulership of the earth. That, that's what we that's what we're going. Heaven on earth. Okay, heaven on earth. Hallowed be thy name. Holy be the most high God's name. Lord, thy kingdom come. Now it says. Thy kingdom come, which means God's kingdom is coming on the earth. In order for God's kingdom, whose kingdom is on earth right now? The white man. The white man, you said it. The white man. So in order for God's kingdom to come on earth, what got to happen to the kingdom that's that's here now? Gotta be destroyed. They got to be destroyed. That's right. When we pray that prayer, we're praying for the destruction of our enemies. That's right. Okay, we've been taught, oh, love your enemies. Pray for them that hate, that, that hate you. The scriptures say that, but you know what it's talking about? It's talking about I'm an Israelite, you're an Israelite. If we have if we have an argument or fight with each other, I'm supposed to forgive you and I'm supposed to make come back. It's not talking about love the people that brought your people over in slavery and whipped the hell out of them for 400 years. That's why most black men, they're like, no, I mean, I can't rock with that Bible. What you tell them? I gotta love somebody that is beat the hell out of me? Right. That's, that's them. Hold on a second. That's them teaching you the Bible incorrectly. And they do that for a reason. Say it again. We have to learn. We got to come back together. Okay, finish reading that and then give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Thy kingdom come. God's thy, kingdom come. Thy will be done. God's will be done. In earth. On the earth. His kingdom is coming to the earth. Go ahead. As it is in heaven. So the kingdom on earth is going to be a reflection of the kingdom in heaven. Okay? And the Israelites are going to be the rulership. How many people heard about the 144? 144,000. Do you know who that is? That when you read in the book of Revelation, I think it's 12. Is that Revelation 12? Okay. Revelation 7. Revelation 7, right. It's 12, 12 the 144 is 12,000 men from each of the 12 tribes. It's 12,000 times 12. Okay, that's your 144,000. Those men are going to be the judges of the earth. Meaning that 
You've been faithful, you repented, you came, you kept the commandments and the faith in Christ, and now when Christ will come, he returns, he says, you brother, you've been faithful. I'm putting you over five cities. Now, you over Maryland, you over New Jersey, you over Delaware, you over uh, 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 Pennsylvania, and you over North Carolina. Another brother, he might put over 10 cities. Another brother, he might put over one city. They're going to, those 12,000 men are going to be the judges or rulers over the whole earth. Under Christ as the king. Christ the king, those men are the judges are ruling under Christ. And the law will be the Bible. This is what we're going to live by. You understand that? Give me what you got. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.